So the last part of this is simply the Calvin cycle. This is that cycle that's equivalent to the citric acid cycle, but maybe the other way around, and it'll help us assimilate carbon dioxide, and that's what it does. Now, we produce glucose from carbon dioxide, so obviously we need to reverse what we do in the citric acid cycle, and in order to do this, we have input as carbon dioxide. So there's going to be three carbon dioxide as input. Well, that's one input. We need that. Plus, we're, we're going to need as input the ATP, and we're going to need as input the NADPH. That's what gives us the energy. So together, these three components, if you put them all together, you end up with something called G3P. That's what this is. G3P has one, two, three carbons, kind of like pyruvic acid, three carbons, and it has a phosphate group. It has a phosphate group that tells you there's energy here. Right? Energy, phosphate group is that little energy coin, and so we have that. And that means that if you take two of these G3P, you put them together, they are going to form glucose because they have the energy to do it right there, built in. So when this bond pops off and the one on the other G3P pops off, the two will form our nice normal glucose structure. And that's what you end up with. And that's why things like fruits are sweet. It's because you end up with a lot of glucose being produced. Now, because of the fact that each time around we use three carbon dioxide, each time around this Calvin cycle we make one of these G3P. So if you're going to make a molecule of glucose, you need to go around twice, clearly. So here's what that looks like. This diagram has more bits and pieces in it than we need. So what we don't need, I will cross out. You don't need to know exactly what this is. You don't need to know exactly what that is or what this is. You just need to know that ATP goes in, NADPH goes in, the CO2 goes in, and you get out G3P. And you take two of these G3P and you make your glucose and sugar and whatever. So that's the, the critical component of this. This is a big cycle with a lot of energy and so on involved, but you just need to know those few components. And when you go back through photosynthesis and see how you put it all together, then you realize, okay, there really is an electron transport chain in the light reactions. And that is what gives us our energy to assimilate the carbon dioxide. And so we do have the reverse here. We make the glucose, we have a reverse cycle, and we do have an electron transport chain. Those, one, two, three, those are the steps in cellular respiration. Glycolysis, citric acid cycle, electron transport chain. And so we do reverse it. Now, here's the thing to remember. If you need cellular respiration, if you need, sorry, if you need oxygen for cellular respiration, where does the oxygen come from? Well, it comes from photosynthesis. That's the only thing that makes free oxygen. It's the only thing on the planet that makes free oxygen. So that's where the oxygen comes from, photosynthesis. Well, if we need oxygen for cellular respiration, that means by necessity, Photosynthesis must have started before cellular respiration. Photosynthesis makes oxygen right there. That oxygen can then be used in cellular respiration. So photosynthesis evolutionarily is the older process. So it's the older process evolutionarily and then cellular respiration could be evolved. So you start out with this set of reactions. And so really, if it comes right down to it, cellular respiration is actually the reverse of photosynthesis, not the other way around. And it's one of those unexpected things, one of those little surprises about nature. <laughs>